Hi Gemini, thank you so much for watching. Um, I have been shuffling these cards for a while now, but I'm going to continue to shuffle for just a little while longer. If you didn't catch my videos that I posted back in November, um, which was my first round of these videos, so December is officially my second round, um, but I do two readings in each video. I start off with a gen uh, love reading for the month, and then I follow that with just a more general reading, so you kind of have um, a little bit more substance to your, to your reading. Um, I'm going to keep shuffling here, and this is going to be for Gemini. 2016, uh, December, uh, uh, I got my years and months all messed up, um, Gemini, December 2015, love reading, Gemini, love reading, Good. Here we go. Gemini love reading for December 2015. Here we go. Your five, uh, seven of swords, nine of swords, the world, the moon. Eight of Wands, the Six of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune, the High Priestess, and the Four of Cups. Okay. Okay, Gemini. Um, This is a love reading, which is kind of interesting because I'm not really seeing a lot of external presence. I feel like there's a lot of things that you are going to be going through internally in terms of yourself and your current mental state. Um, I'm not seeing so much of, you know, interactions with another person. So let me just go ahead and get started. You have actually four major arcana in this reading. And it just kind of seems like um, you're going through this period maybe of, like, self-sabotage. And you're sort of stealing away with your own thoughts. You, you know, you're going, you know, through a period where it's probably something that's been building for a while and is, you know, something that has been a recur, you know, these uh, nines and tens of sword cards were recur very present in last month's um, readings as well. I don't remember if I had this in the Gemini reading, but um, a lot of people I pulled this card for. And it's just something that's, that's kind of out there that we're all kind of going through is just things that are weighing on our shoulders that are um, kind of keeping us up at night and, and things that are weighing really heavily on our shoulders and they're very prominent and very present in our lives. It's sort of an overwhelming um, mental state, you know, something that just is, you know, at the front of our minds all the time. Um, I feel like you may be having some level of success or might be coming to some point. Look out, baby. This is my cat. They all, all the animals love when I do the readings. They all come hang out. So <laughs> you might see a few little creatures running around. But I feel like you have some some hope or some uh, level of potential like closure or coming to a a sense of completion and fulfillment in your life. Um, but for whatever reason, you might be 
kind of avoiding that or you might be, you know, hanging on to the things that you know and hanging on to the way that you've been living your life. Um, you know, here you are, you're sort of s stealing your stealing things away from yourself, stealing away from your future. Um, look out, baby. And, you know, it seems like maybe this this period of, of closure is a little bit scary for you because with closure comes new beginnings and it comes new opportunities, but things that we've maybe never experienced before that are incredibly unfamiliar. Um, you have two like moon cards. We actually pulled the moon for you and we also pulled the high priestess. And both of these cards are indicative of like the unknowns and you know this may be a little bit more of an external uh, indicator of you know the pathway ahead of you might be a little bit scary it might be a little bit dark it's it's not lit very well you know you can't really see clearly the the outcome or if you do take this path or if you do embark upon this new journey or endeavor um, you know, you're, it's so unfamiliar and it's so unexplored that it is scary for you. Um, and that, coupled with the high priestess, though, because the priestess is sort of, you know, those things that we know but we don't know we know, it's that very still, very quiet, quiet voice within ourselves that is speaking to us, but we have to be incredibly quiet and still in order to, to hear it and in order to appreciate it and in order to, you know, like take our own advice. Um, it seems like you might be You know, in the very center of your reading, you have your Eight of Wands, which is, you know, a swift motion and it kind of gives a little bit of action to all the cards in the reading. It gives it a little bit of oomph, if you will. Um, it amplifies the, the speed or the capacity at which you're kind of going through these motions. So I'm kind of getting the sense that you're going to come to your senses very quickly in regards to this level of self-sabotage, you know, in regards to a relationship, since this is a love reading, it's possible that you have a new love interest or your current partner, you know, if you are in a relationship or if you're married and you have a, a situation where you're maybe feeling happy, maybe getting to a point or a level of comfort and that is sort of, you know, that's your world. That's kind of, you know, when you get to that level, that's sort of a new phase. It's sort of a new era in your life. When you get to a position where you feel confident in something, that confidence then cycles back through and brings you to a level of, you know, of self-consciousness and, and, you know, questioning, well, it's not this way anymore. It's, it's transformed into something else. And, and this is all in your head. It's not like real things, really. It's just all you and you may be backtracking on the things that you, you maybe once said, or the things that maybe you once thought, you know, maybe, you're saying, you know, you set certain goals in the past and now that those goals are actually coming to fruition, you are sort of actively working against it. Um, not necessarily, you know, I don't really see anything incredibly terrible or anything in this reading by any means. It just is more you have a very active mind, you are very aware of these thoughts, and you might even be aware that you're self-sabotaging a little bit, and, you know, you're just inherently 
fearful of the unknown, inherently feel fearful of moving in a, in a direction that you're just really not comfortable with. Um, but it seems like you do come to your senses, and again, this kind of gives speed and amplifies the you know the rate at which you're going through all of this. And you will go through a phase or a moment of silence, if you will, um, with your Six of Swords. So you're sort of degrading in terms of the number of swords. So you have a nine and a seven up here at the top, and then you're kind of pulling them down to a six. And this is one of the best sword cards. This is one of my favorite cards in the entire deck, actually. And this represents, you know, some sort of a spiritual journey or coming to like mental peace, coming to mental quiet. Um, you know, it's sort of the silence of the swords and it's, you know, organizing your thoughts in, in a way and beginning to accept the things that are your life lessons, your life experiences, your, you know, your learning experiences that you've gone through and taking those things and moving in a new direction um, peacefully and happily um, and becoming a better person for that. You know, we all evolve as people because of the things we've gone through, because of the, the things that we've um, had to deal with and, and sort of, you know, it shapes who we are. And I'm seeing, you know, you have your wheel of fortune here you know, the what goes around comes around type of idea. Um, what goes around comes around and you're finally getting what you deserve. You're finally getting what you set out to achieve. It's, you know, it's here. It's coming to fruition. It's, um, you're maybe getting a sense of completion, but you, you know, Gemini, the twins, <laughs> you know, the two faces, you know, you're kind of showing your true colors a little bit. I, I think you you have it, and it's something that's tangible. But then, you know, you're fighting against it a little bit. You you're your own opposing force. Um, so if you're dating someone new, as an example, and you it might be going well. You might be enjoying each other's company. Again, I'm not seeing a lot of emotional cards here but more just mental, the mental state that you're in. Um, it might be going well, there might be something promising in the works, but then you might be like talking yourself into why it won't work or why this person is no good or why this person is, you know, a bad partner. And you recognize that you're doing this and then you question, well, why am I doing this? And so, you know, you will recognize it. And while it is scary and your path moving forward is a little bit dark and, and ominous and a little mysterious, um, and it's, you know, a little bit just so unsure, but you will become aware of this quickly. <laughs> and I think you'll stop yourself. You know, you will stop yourself and you will go through that phase, well, finally, you know, you'll say to yourself, finally, this is, you know, everything that I wanted. It, it is, you know, I've been a good person or I have done certain things. And so finally, the things that I've put out into the universe, the energy that I've been exerting is finally coming back to sort of compensate me, if you will, you know. Um, but all that being said... <laughs> You know, I am seeing at the end of the reading, you know, a little bit of disengagement on your part, a little bit of, you know, melancholy, being a little bit just uninterested in the things that are maybe are being offered to you. And maybe that has something to do with just your your mental state. You know, when we're so self-involved and we're going through such a, like a heavy dark time or a dark phase. Um, sometimes the things that we are being presented to us as good opportunities might just not really seem so interesting because we're 
going through things and we know that we need to work through these things before we can really start to accept the things that are being offered to us. And, you know, again, you know, you have your high priestess here in the middle. Sorry, let me get her out of the way. There you go, baby. Um, you know, you have your high priestess down here in the middle, which means that, that in, intuition that you know what is right. And it might take some time for you to really come to that understanding. And it will take a moment of sort of meditation and spiritual evolution on your part. So, some, some spiritual um, growth if you will. And, you know, this card even sometimes can represent a physical journey, you know, coming up with the holidays. We have a lot of travel. We have a lot of, you know, meeting with family and going from place to place and party to party. Um, sometimes that travel, that experience, that disconnection from your real life, from your everyday, day-to-day, -day, you know, operations, um, that disconnection, which can also be, you know, interpreted from this card as well, um, is what in that disconnection from the day to day is what enables us to sort of get our head back on straight and to reprioritize. You know, that's why people take vacations because they, you know, it puts things in perspectives. It gives them a fresh new light. It gives them a fresh new like perspective on everything that's going on. Um, you know, this this um, process of self-sabotage, this concept, this idea of like stealing things away from ourselves um, is, is a very, very common. I don't pull this card very often though. Uh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really come up as often as, as some of the others. Um, so, so that's a little bit unique. Let me pull your outcome card for your love reading. Again, not a lot of love concepts. Sometimes, you know, sometimes even though we are reading for a love type of, you know, your love energies, um, sometimes we really just have a period where it's just all about us. And while there may be love in our lives and lots of these issues and things can be derived from those relationships, sometimes it really is just all about us. All right, Gemini, the outcome for the love reading for December 2015. The Six of Pentacles, which is a card that I find very appropriate for the holidays. <laughs> you know, it's kind of the um, the give and take, the charitable aspect of our lives, a generosity, and also receiving. It is that you know, equaling. You know, when you have things to be able to give those things back into the world as well. And this card coupled with your Wheel of Fortune, I feel they're they're very complimentary. You know, giving when you have and asking when you need are two very, you know, important elements of life in general. And in a love capacity, you know, it might be, you know, indicative of, 
you know, here you are, you're going through this, like, uh, I know I should want this, but I'm like so drawn to doing it this other way, or, you know, you're kind of fighting against the good things, it's like almost like a fear of success, if you will. And sometimes when you look out and you get out of your head a little bit and um, you start to, you know, honestly, I'm feeling like this could actually be like charitable acts, you know, and with the holidays coming up, it's such a, a prominent, you know, it's always on the, in the media and the news and everyone's doing volunteer work and there's all these, these things going on. Um, and when we do those things, it really helps to remind us how blessed we really are and how much we actually do have. And it gives us a new light and a new way of looking at our own life and what people mean to us. And why would you fight so, so aggressively? And why would you talk yourself out of something that is so wonderful? And why would you, you know, want to go back to the way that things used to be when the future is so promising? And and why are you allowing these things to, to keep you up at night and, and to... Um, to bother you so much when these things are so great. And, you know, why, why are you afraid to, to experience things that haven't been experienced before? You know, that's the, almost the point of life. You know, that's what helps keep us feeling alive and helps us stay active and helps us, you know, move forward and take the new steps. And that is just, you know, the wheels that turn. You know, you kind of have two wheels here. I mean, you have the world and the wheel of fortune. And, I mean, even the pentacles, you know. A lot of times, you know, the circles circles are the wheels they're the, the the circle of life the cycles that we go through and they continue to spin and they continue to turn over and you know the, at one point it could be pointing down and then the next it's it's going up so you know there's there's a lot of looks like a lot of revolving <laughs> happening in your month for December um, you know and and going through these, you know, these periods of disengagement or these periods of solitude and, and mental, um, you know, like a meditation period are also really important because that's kind of, you know, what, what brings us to that ultimate level of understanding and brings us to that quiet place where we can then make a more in tune decision, you know, in tune with what we what we feel is best for us in our life. So very interesting reading. Very interesting. Um, I think if I missed anything. You know, I think I think that's everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, stop the camera. I'm going to shuffle the cards, and we'll do your general for December 2015. Okay, here we go. I have been shuffling these for a while now, so we do it for just a few more times on camera, and then we'll go ahead and draw. This is for Gemini. For December 2015 general reading. General reading. One more. Yep, we're done. When the cards don't want to shuffle anymore, then we're done. Okay. This one. Ten of Swords, Nine of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, 
ten, uh, nine of cups, knight of swords, the chariot, the king of swords, the wheel of fortune recurring, and temperance. Okay, Gemini, this is almost an identical reading. I don't even need to think about this one. This is crazy. So, okay. I'm trying to figure out where to start. You even have some of the things in the same places. So, let me just kind of even go through this, like, comparing so you can kind of see what it is I'm talking about. So, you have in the center of your reading that Knight of Swords, which to me... Um, you know, kind of represents, it can represent your energy. You know, you actually have two sword suit cards. Uh, the swords are air sign, which you are Gemini. This is absolutely your energy in this reading. This is both represent re representing you. Um, the Knight of Swords is that, like, level of haste it's it's moving forward it's you know not really thinking before you act and you know in the last reading you had the eight of wands here which is a very similar type of energy it's fast moving fast acting you know it sort of speeds up the pace of the entire reading and all the energies within the reading so you have that element in, in this whole this whole thing um, additionally, you have both the Nine of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups, which, uh, you know, for me, is very similar to the world. When you put these two together, you know, you have two suits being represented here at their highest level. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, you know, they're both not quite tens, all you know, admittedly, but they are pretty darn close. They're both nines. And the reason why it's a little more important that they're nines is because here you have single energies here. And in the last reading, I told you that I didn't really see a lot of, you know, external energies. That this was very much about you and your journey and your sort of mental state. Well, uh, if you had tens of each of these, I would, you know, there would be other people involved. But because they're nines and both of the, you know, these cards are very similar. You know, you have a single individual here sort of showcasing and, you know, that feeling, that level of pride in what they've accomplished. And these are things that you have done in your life, you know, career and professionally and also emotionally as well. You know, it's that evolution of a human um, as they grow up and go through these life experiences and as they evolve and become better and more um, well-rounded, more mature people. Um, so this is very similar to that world card that we drew in the last reading. So those two cards are being squared up in this position with your Ten of Swords, which again, you know, very similar to your um, nine of swords that you had in the last reading, although more intense, amplified, it is that feeling of like, this is final. I, I always say, put a fork in me, I'm done. You're just absolutely overwhelmed, exhausted with this sort of internal battle that you're going through. And these swords have been acquired over time. I'm sure, you know, if this reading speaks to you and makes sense to you, um, then you should know what I'm talking about here. These are things that are just incredibly prominent in your life. They are front of mind all the time. And they are, it's killing you, killing you softly. And so your sort of mental state is squaring up and you know, is squaring up that level of happiness and fulfillment and, you know, that ultimate attainment of the things that everyone wants. And it's directly related to just some, 
idea that you are just not letting go of. There's just some idea, some reason why you're not letting yourself experience these wonderful things. Um, like, why is it? Why aren't you uh, allowing... Why are you holding on so much to the past? Why are you holding on to a four when you could have a nine? You know? Why are you? And again, you know, last time you had the seven of swords, which now that energy and that concept is then being reinforced and amplified with the major arcana, with the seven, with the the chariot, which is those internal dualities, uh, you know, the internal struggles, the, the, pull, the, the pulling of the heart with the mind, and that, you know, just, I don't know how else to explain it, the internal struggle of, you know, like this card is uh, two beasts pulling in opposite, pulling the chariot in opposite direction. It's a lot of haste, a lot of action, which makes sense right next to the Knight of Swords, which is your energy. You know, you're like, it's a very active thought process that you're going through. Um, with that being said, though, you know, you do have your Wheel of Fortune card reappearing, which is what goes around comes around. You know, things are going to come to fruition. Things are going to, to cycle through and turn around again, and you're going to either have, like, maybe a new start, a new beginning, or you're finally getting back what you have been giving. You know, in the last reading, again, I, I didn't see a lot of love energies. However, in a love capacity, even though this is a general reading, in a love capacity, um, you know, it's what you have been giving to the other person versus what they have been giving to you. And that, you know, you, you getting what, what you deserve. You know, if, if those scales were imbalanced at any time, um, then it will, they will work themselves out. Now, I do see some level of, you know, you, again, you being very aware of what it is you're, you're going through and, and sort of your mental state and you being aware that you might be going in two opposite directions. You don't maybe necessarily want to be doing that. Um, you, you know, are also being represented here. So you have the Knight of Swords, which might indicate the rate at which you're experiencing all of this. But the King indicating how you're sort of handling it. Um, more mature, more self-aware you know, you're an air sign, you are an intelligent person, you are philosophical, you are, you know, a curious energy, and, you know, you are sort of master of your domain here with the king, you know, you are in your element. I love when I pull, you know, the royalty or the court cards of the sign that I'm reading for. So you're a Gemini and I pulled the King of Swords, which is like the highest sword card, um, which just means that you're in your element. You know, you are experiencing yourself as a Gemini to the ultimate extreme. And you will have, at the end of your reading, immediately following this Wheel of Fortune, and, you know, squaring up the, the Wheel of Fortune and the Chariot. Squaring it up is your Temperance card, which is that meeting, that meeting place um, between your mind and your heart, what you think and what you feel. And that is very much this battle that you're dealing with here, and it's very much this idea that you're holding fast to for whatever reason, you know, the fear, the, you know, being scared of moving on or whatever it is. Um, you will come to a 
balanced place. Your, your heart and your mind will meet at, you know, reach an equilibrium. And there's no, no negative side uh, to that. I don't, you know, I don't really see that you're moving on or anything like that. But I do feel that with this king energy, this master, this, you know, you have mastered the craft of being, being um, who you are. And using that, that energy and that knowledge of yourself to the fullest and leveraging that in order to reach that, that balance. Um, it's crazy, almost an identical reading. So I'm going to go pull the outcome card. Okay, I just want to make sure they were right side up. Oh, and here we go. <laughs> that that same card, the Seven of Swords again, um, which is just here being reinforced by its major arcana, the that duality that's going on, that internal like you want to go up, but you want to go down. You want to go left. You want to go right. Um, just uh, kind of like a, conf a con real confusion, you know. Here you are with the promise of these wonderful things, but for some reason you're holding fast to this idea of the way you think things should be or the way things were or, you know, the things that you've accomplished, you know, but for some reason you're just battling yourself and preventing yourself from attaining these these things here. Um, I'm not sure. Sorry. Not sure why you're doing that when you have these wonderful things in front of you. But again, I, I do see that you're, again, you're experiencing it at kind of a, a fast pace this mental process is very active it's very like the wheels are definitely spinning and y you know you will i do see you working through it again with the reading kind of finishing here with this temperance card um again this is a short-term reading december uh prominent issues going on so um so yeah, I don't really, I don't really see anything else. I don't see a lot of um, issues pertaining to your career specific or health or or family members. Again, I'm seeing just you as a single energy, you a single energy in all these cards, and just something that you need to to deal with. My goodness, <laughs> seems like it's going to be a very interesting month for you. So anyway, um, that concludes your reading. It's a very clear reading for you. Um, if you have any questions or concerns or if you're interested in a reading uh, more specific for you, you know, personalized reading, I do put my contact information down below in the description box. So you're, you're more than welcome to reach out to me or just to comment or, or something. I, I try to respond. Um, and that's it. And I'm I'm going to probably be doing a year annual 2016 general reading for each sign a little bit more in depth. I know um, 
there's a lot of um, readers and astrologers doing that and I think that it would be a really really fun way to sort of bring in the new year and and to do something a little bit more detailed and more specific for each sign so keep your eyes open for that and thank you so much for watching I hope you have a good um, a good New Year's